Nowadays, the social media landscape can feel quite overwhelming. With Instagram, TikTok, YouTube and Clubhouse, podcasting and your website and newsletter and so many more ways to connect to your audience or to your friends even. And one of the most common questions around that topic when I talk to new clients in one of my consulting sessions is, do I have to be on all of these platforms? And if not, which one do you choose? Because that's not really an easy question. All of these platforms have valuable aspects to them, no matter what you want to use them for. If you just want to stay connected to your friends, if you want to deliver value, if you want to find new customers or provide information. All of these platforms are very different from each other as well. So how do you make that decision? And also, where do you even start? Now, the first thing I always say is no, of course, you do not have to be on every single platform. However, there are also other aspects that you might want to consider. But first up, you don't have to be on every single platform. It makes a lot of sense to choose which ones you prefer and also which ones work for you. But of course, there's a little bit of a process that also comes into the mix. Because I would also say you might not want to just scrap them out completely from the get-go just because you don't understand them in the beginning. And that's at least something that I have come to know over the years that sometimes once you start actually dipping your toes in, once you start seeing whether or not that platform actually could work for you and also could be something that you might even enjoy, that actually becomes a super valuable asset. Now, the benefits of social media are plentiful. You can connect with people in a completely new and different way. You don't have to budget any marketing expense except for maybe the productions of videos and similar things. But for many aspects of doing business online, these platforms have given you the tools into your hands that with a simple phone that has a decent camera, you can interact with a lot of people. And if you go on the Twitter route, for example, you don't even need a camera. You can just use your thumbs to type those messages. And the same thing is true for podcasting, Clubhouse, and any of those other ways. It has become incredibly easy to connect with people, your audience, or your customers. Providing value on those platforms is something that with that also became super, super easy even though it might sound or feel a little daunting at first. That feeling, I would say, most often comes from not knowing the platform enough, not knowing what you can do and also what you might not want to do on certain platforms. And of course, getting to know these things, that costs time. Time you might not have, but if you do have something that is already working and you just want to branch out into different areas, maybe it is time worth investing or hiring someone who can do those kind of jobs for you in those social media platforms or on those networks to be able to have a presence for your business. Now, if you're just doing all of that yourself and you're starting out maybe or you have a small shop, a small business and you don't have the funds at the moment to outsource all of the social media creation, then I would say, and maybe this is even true for the case when you do have the money to outsource parts of this, it is actually good to take that into your own hands. Because the transparency and the personality that you can bring to your own brand actually is something that is super valuable in this day and age where these personal brands are sometimes even more important than the company brand that you are representing. And I always look at, for example, Gary Vaynerchuk, who is doing an enormous job at that. He has a team of people just representing his personal brand. And then he also is representing all of the company brands that he has built and is working with. And I think that that is something that can be incredible value to you, your brand and your company. If you are starting out with your own brand as a personal brand to build that up. However, going back to the initial question, where do you actually do that? And with that, I would say the smartest thing probably would be one, 
create an account wherever you can with your handle. For my own accounts, I always try to get at Chris Spiegel so that I am the same name, the same user handle on all of these platforms, whether that's be Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube. You can find me with that name everywhere. And that is super valuable. And if you can, just register your accounts, whether that's on TikTok, on Clubhouse, on Instagram, or Twitter. It doesn't matter. Just try to register your accounts whenever you hear of those new networks. That does not mean that you have to use them, but just saving your account name is already valuable. The next step would be then also to just have those apps on your phone. And if you have the time in between things, or maybe even schedule the time for like half an hour every week or a couple of days a week, that you look into those applications and you learn and try to understand them. You of course also can read about them. So you read some tutorials about how to use TikTok for your business and similar things. There are plenty of resources out there that can help you understand those platforms a bit better and with that also learn how they work because that's actually something that is very different from platform to platform. A TikTok video is completely different from just a simple Instagram post and that is completely different from a Twitter tweet and that of course is completely different from a YouTube video. All of these are incredibly valuable and can be powerful for you but it is really good to understand which way to communicate on which platform so that you sound native on each of these platforms and not just like you pulled something from one platform and just splattered it all over the place on all of those other platforms. This, of course, is also something that I continue to try to learn because taking the information, the value that I can provide on a YouTube video and packaging that into a maybe series of tweet or just a couple of tweets, that is something that I am working on and learning and trying to understand better in terms of how these different platforms can benefit my brand and how I can bring them together so that they don't just feel like I'm just splattering my videos onto Twitter or uploading them to Instagram TV, but instead Instead, I use those platforms natively for what they were built for and what kind of consuming is happening on each of these platforms. But that is, again, something that you cannot get without experiencing the platforms or trying to understand them and learn about them. So that would be the next step. Have them on your phone, use them every now and then, check them out, try to understand what's going on and maybe even read about them so that you have a better understanding because there are experts out there that can help you with that kind of understanding. And once you have done those steps, probably the next best thing would be to try to create something onto those platforms. Try to see if you can find your fit, if you can find your content to provide on Twitter, or maybe a conversation that you can engage in on Clubhouse. Those kind of things are then the next step in terms of getting to know if the platform is right for you. And doing that again on each of those platforms, because you don't really know from the get-go whether or not you will like a certain process or if you like a different process. Some people like to communicate with photography. Some people prefer to communicate with text files in blog posts, or some people prefer very short text snippets on Twitter. Others make more video content or long form podcasts. So find your style there, try them out, see what shoe fits essentially, so that you can then dive real deep into that medium that you started to getting to know. And of course, then you are in a place once you have done those steps and understood the platforms, you created something on the platforms, you got a feel for what people are kind of used to there, what people are doing there, how they're interacting with you back. And once you've done that for a couple of weeks with each of these platforms, maybe one after the other and not necessarily right at the same time, that might be a bit of an overload. And then you kind of distill it down to which one you like best. Because again, I believe there is something to be said about system overload with too many social networks and too many things going on at the same time. And if you don't have the scale or the team to provide content on all of these platforms in their native form, it might just be best to choose maybe two, three of those platforms. For me, for example, that would be Instagram, Twitter, 
and YouTube at the moment. Those are the three ones that I would say I'm more focused on. And in the back of my mind, I kind of have TikTok and also Clubhouse. So those are the avenues that I am playing with right now and trying to learn and understand and work with. And that is basically my process that I would recommend you go through. Get to know the platforms, also use them, create something on them, understand how they work, and then also feel into it which one you prefer most because in the long run, you will have to continue to create things week after week on those platforms and it might make sense to do something that you actually also enjoy doing. As you start growing, you might also come into the position where you can then also outsource certain tasks or automate certain things with tools and that might help you to then also be able to branch out onto those other platforms. But for the start, try to focus yourself on two platforms, maybe one, maybe three, and see that you can grow that way, that you can basically find your footing and expand from there. Now that is my opinion on the question whether or not you need to be on every single platform. Now my question for you today is which two platforms are the most important for you right now? Have you already gotten to know those? And also, are you actively contributing to those platforms, to your communities there? Leave a comment down below and let me know which two platforms you are active on and what you're doing there to engage with your audience. Now, with that said, I hope this was an interesting video for you in a bit of a different style. If you found it helpful or interesting, I would appreciate a thumbs up. That helps out tremendously for the YouTube algorithm and also helps me to understand better which type of videos you like best on my channel. Now, I hope you have an amazing day. Create your content on your platforms and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.